Three, two, one. Get out! Two, one.
Three, two, one.
three, two, one. Three, two, one. One. One.
Two. One.
Pump Action TT-75. This is an average gun for range and accuracy, but a bit slow in firing due to the pump action. Better guns are available, but choose this gun if you're looking for a challenge. Pump Action TX-100. This is a very accurate gun with a good range. While the pump action slows the firing rate down a bit, this would be an ideal gun for someone wanting to take up a sniper position for base defense. Semi-Auto Rogue 110. This is a slow-end semi-automatic gun. Accuracy and distance are fairly poor, but the speed is quite a bit better than either of the pump action guns available. This gun would be good if you want to challenge yourself, but still keep up with other players using semi-automatic weapons. Semi-Auto Rogue 125. This gun has poor distance capabilities, but decent accuracy and the advantage of the semi-automatic rate of fire. While it's not as good as some other guns available, it's not a bad choice either. Semi-Auto Titan 90. This is a good gun, but not perfect by any standard. It has good accuracy and the rate of fire advantage of a semi-automatic, but a less than the stellar range. This is a good gun for close combat. Semi-Auto Titan 100. While this gun has certain advantages over the previous model, the Titan 90, such as a bigger hopper, they were at the expense of accuracy. Because of those changes, with a medium distance capability and a semi-automatic rate of fire, make this a good gun to clear a small area. Semi-Auto Goliath 110. This is a good all-round gun, probably the best general purpose weapon you have available. It has a good accuracy, a good rate of fire and a decent range. Semi-Auto Goliath 125. This is a great gun for distance and accuracy. The rate of fire is weak for a semi-automatic weapon, but still better than either of the pump guns. This would be the ultimate gun for a sniper defending the base or going on attack. Pump Action TT-75. Bunker Hill. This area is a rectangular area with the two flags positioned in two diagonal corners. In front of the flag areas there are open spaces with boxes, rocks and trees to provide protection. The middle of the arena is dominated by large buildings, mostly warehouses. Most of these buildings have multiple entries, although they are old warehouses they don't provide a lot of protection. Most buildings also feature several levels inside, connected with pathways or stairs. Due to the arena's many interconnecting paths, you always need to stay on your toes, an enemy can appear almost anywhere. Gloomy Woods. In a very atmospheric, dark surrounding, this arena is oval shaped, surrounded by very thick vegetation. The flags are positioned in each side of the arena, with a bunker on each side of the flag for strong defense. In the middle of the map there is a clearing with another bunker on each side. These are of high tactical importance as they control the passages between the two camps. There is also some cover present in the form of trees and low standalone walls. A good start is important when playing this arena. Getting early control of the two middle bunkers can prove decisive. Irish Forest. The area is a rather small circular forest. The large trees give good cover and together with the many standalone walls you should be able to move around without exposing yourself in open areas very much. However, due to the fact the area is circular, enemies can turn up from all directions if you're located in the middle. In case you do get caught in the middle of the map, there is always a way out. Run through the old fallen tree, which now serves as a tunnel. It will take you out of the heat, at least temporarily. A good idea might be to stick to the fence, which is surrounding the area. That rules out being attacked from behind. Hilltop Village. This arena needs tactical skill to master due to its size and its many strong tactical positions. The two flags are positioned at each end. The area is dominated by a high hill in the middle. On one side there is a pond with a bridge over it, on the other there are boxes and other things that can be used for cover, and also the start of a pathway leading to the top of the hill. Be sure to receive cover from your teammates while going up the pathway. There is nowhere to hide and the pathway is long. Under the hill there is a tunnel which leads to a tactically strong plateau situated above the pond. Passing the plateau, there is a pathway leading to the second entry of the hilltop. The hilltop offers quite a lot of good protection in the form of standalone walls and boxes. There are also two small houses that you can enter for protection from multiple directions. Ghettoville. This is a very difficult map to control. 
It's like a small city consisting of large condemned buildings. The streets are mostly wide open without much cover, only the occasional cargo box and a few oil barrels. This makes it very tricky to safely make your way from building to building. Inside the buildings, on the other hand, cover is generously offered by hiding behind boxes, tipped over tables and bars. A good tactic for this map is to stick close to your teammates and very methodically track down your opponents. Bunker Hill. This area is a...